What if there was a way to guarantee a sale, to have the perfect sales system to make sure that you close every single time? Hi, my name is Kayla Hodges. I'm the number one female sales trainer under 30 and I really wish that existed. Um, but in the meantime, what we can use is science to get us pretty damn close. So there's a science to sales. You're supposed to do things step by step, scientifically, psychologically, in order to take the client through a process to get them closer to making a buying decision. And if you do things out of order, you are not only going to mess up the sale, but you're also gonna mess up your process. You see, when you look into sales, you look at data and you look at bottlenecks, what is working, what is not working. And if you don't do the same thing consistent over and over and over again, you're not gonna be able to see where your bottlenecks are. Just like if I was prepping for a show in bodybuilding, I would eat the same thing every single day and I would change things a little bit here and a little bit there over days at a time, weeks at a time to see what is working for my body and what is not working for my body. The same thing works in a sale. So I'm gonna show you what the perfect sales process is supposed to look like. And I've done a lot of different sales trainings. I've done Grant Cardone, Jordan Belfort, I've done Tony Robbins, sell a lot of spirituality stuff, and Brian Tracy. I came up with a lot of my own methodologies, but what I really like is Jordan Belfort's straight line method because he talks about the psychology of keeping people in a process, getting them from step A to step C. From the beginning where you meet them, which I will demonstrate on this piece of paper, the beginning all the way to the end where they make a buying decision. Boom, there we go. <clears throat> now, during this process, there is a couple steps that they go on this journey. The first step is called the fact finding process, which I'll do another video about that later. It could be a whole entire video, but <clears throat> in the fact finding process, excuse me, is where you figure out where they are and what's going on in their world and the pain that they are going through. What is their problem? Okay. The second process that you get them to the second little step in your journey is where do they want to go? What is the vision for their life? What is it that they're actually wanting? And none of this surface level bullshit, I wanna make so much a month. No, no, no. Why do they wanna make that a month? What's actually the underlying reason for them wanting to be successful? What is their driving factor? And will you be willing to go deep enough to figure it out? And then the last little part is the gap, which is what the hell is in the way from where they are and where they wanna go. And are you the person or the solution that's going to solve that gap? Now, the perfect sale would be, I started at the beginning talking to this client. I figured out where they are. They tell me exactly where they are. They tell me where all the problems. I figure out where they wanna go. They tell me exactly where they wanna go. They tell me all the details. They tell me what's in the gap. And then they say yes to me and they give me their money. And 99 times out of 100, that's not how the sales process goes, which is why you have to have strategy and skills to be able to get people through this process because if not, anyone would be able to sell and it'd be super, super easy and everyone would make a lot of money and no one would be on this video right now. So that being said, what actually happens in the sale? Most of the time, people go on little rabbit trails of conversations. What does that look like? That looks like they start right here and where they are and then they're like, hey, What's actually going on in your world? And they start talking about their fucking dog and they talk about whatever and, and they start going on this trail. Pardon my cussing. I'm working on that. I was a waitress for 10 years, so you got to pardon me. Kitchen methodology. And they talk about their child and they talk about all this stuff and they're all up over here in la la land. And your job is to do what? It's to bring them back to the line. The person that asks the most questions in the sale is the person that is in control of the sale. So in order to be in control and not let the client be in control or the lead be in control, you have to ask them a question to bring them back to surface earth and to get them back on the line of the sale. So what we would do is we would ask them again about where they are currently by restating, by mirroring what they said. So if I'm saying, hey, are you a coach? And I'm looking to service coaches and they're saying yes. I said, how long have you been a coach? Well, maybe start being a coach. What's the biggest problem that you're having about your coaching business? And they start going on and talking about their day. I'm like, totally understand that. I'm with you, that must be rough. You know, when you talked earlier, you said you were so passionate about becoming a coach because it's what you've always dreamed about since you were a little kid. I'm curious, like, why are you on the call today? What is the number one reason why you wanted to book a call? What's actually going on? Holding space. We can go into all that later, but really, really diving deep here.
getting the back to the line. As soon as you really figure out what's going on, and you're gonna have to peel some layers here. Just because they tell you what the issue is doesn't mean that's a real issue. You're gonna have to peel back some layers, which is a whole nother training, but really figuring out what's going on, you're gonna get into the next step. Next step is figuring out what is it that they want. You understand what the problem is, but what do they want? Why the hell are they going to work for it? Any type of program that you're going to sell them requires uncomfortability, requires growth. So you have to figure out why it is that they want that. Just because they say, oh, I wanna make $50,000 a month, and you're like, okay, great. But why? <laughs> why is it that they'd be willing to do the work? Because just making 50 grand is nothing, right? So if they are willing to do the work because, you know, that they have a sick kid or um, because it's a mission in their heart to do something big or whatever the situation is, right? Because they're willing to take responsibility and they're, they know that they've always had it inside them all along and they feel called to do this. Like, what are, find the underlying reason. Okay. Now, during this process, what might happen is they start talking about their future and then they start going on to this long rabbit trail. Well, I've always wanted to do this and I don't know if I could have done that. And, you know, back in my day, I, I thought I was going to go to college and then I went on this long thing and then I started working for this and this company and this and this company. And they're talking nonsense. You have to bring them back to the line again. Okay. Asking them a question again, acknowledging them, listening to them, and then asking again, hey, like, let's get you to the next level. Asking them again, I know that you said that you wanted to make $50,000 a month. And I, I appreciate that you're talking to me about, you know, your college days and everything else that you've been through. But tell me, like, be real with me. Why is it that you actually want this? What would make you work hard enough to do this? What would give you the discipline to wake up in the morning and be hungry? Why? And just keep filling back those layers. And the last part is like the gap. Why is it that they haven't figured it out now? Now they might go into some long thing, again, off the trail, about how they have figured out most of it now and you know, like they've been doing the best that they could and all this other stuff. The reality is that they haven't been able to figure it out now because they haven't had the guidance, the leadership, the blueprint to be able to figure it out or they would have already figured it out. So the whole point of the gap is that you're trying to get them to realize that they need you that you are the person that can help fill this gap, that you are it because you listen, because you care, because you took time to go deep on these questions because you are holding space for them, not because you're pushing them into making a decision on the sale. In fact, in this process where they figure out that you are the person that is in the, the key holder to closing their gap, you don't wanna be pushy at all. You want them to make the decision that they want you more than you need them. At the end, one of the best questions you can say, okay, well now, when do you want to fix all this? Or what is it that you want to do? Get them to figure out and ask you how they can start working with you. Get them to a point where if you go do this right and you really go deep, get them into an emotional state here and a logical state here. They're going to ask you how they can work with you. This process looks simple and looks easy but it takes a lot of practice. You're gonna have to do a lot of sales calls. The more in control that you can be during this call, the better results that you're going to get. If you allow yourself to get emotionally in this call, emotionally charged, it's going to be harder for you to close because closing is an illogical, emotionless state and selling is in an emotional state. Care in the call, be in the call, emotionally get with them in the call. Do not be sympathetic, be empathetic. Be there. I'm so glad that we're on this call today. You stay grounded. You don't need them. They need you. And at the end, don't be desperate for the sale. But you need to follow this process because if you skip the fact finding, you go straight to what they want or you don't go to what they want, you go straight to what's in the gap, like you're doing something wrong. So at least make sure that you have this right and then we can work on the small details to make you the absolute best at what you do.